Yeah, this is a difficult. This whole both these games have been very difficult to pick, but I'm going to take the Eagles in a close contest, 21 to 20. I think what it comes down to is the Ooh. quarterback play. I'm not saying that Brock Purdy is going to be exposed or anything like that. I expect him to play well. But I think this Eagles team has been somehow still overlooked because they were so good for such a long time. Had a couple of missteps when Gardner Minshew was in there, but now that Gar now that Jalen's back and ready to go, I just don't think it'll be stopped. Okay. I'm not looking at Brock Purdy to make any mistakes. What I'm really looking at is the Philadelphia Eagles. Their times, their secondary, for every 10 great plays, they have about two or three plays that are mistakes, and I believe those mistakes will cost them. So I have the 49ers 21, 24-21 uh, upset, and I need brighter lights. More, more, <laughs> more, more light. I'm with you. Uh, Steve, Steve is on point. Uh, something about the Niners that I just feel like they have the upper hand in this matchup. And it's going to take Nick Bosa having a monster day. But Kyle Shanahan has to be in his bag for this to uh, come to fruition. So let's go with the Niners 24 to 20. Yeah. Um, wild by one point, you guys. Come on. Yeah. Come on, MJ. I told you I've lost sleep over this. It's, it's come on. Come on. such a tough matchup, come on. such a close matchup. So you know what I did? I phoned a friend. Oh. Kim Bapa or Super Bowl? I can't pick. I don't know. Yo creo que los Bengals de parte de la AFC, pero no sé for NFC. So give me the two teams: Bengals and and Eagles. It's my dad's pick. Okay, thanks, Dad. My dad now in retirement. He has plenty of time to help out his firstborn. Dare I say, favorite child? Am I taking the easy way out? Maybe. But my dad and I, we talk ball all the time, constantly. So I said, let me just pick up the phone and call this man. Let him pick. So Bobby's pick, Eagles. I'm going to pick up where he left off. I'll give you the score, 24 to 21. We also asked you guys at home. Ooh, okay, ooh, Niner gang, whoa, I see y'all. 64% of bang. folks. You need to take a picture of that and send it to Pop. Send it to my, yeah, yeah. Send it to my dad. He's watching. He knows. He knows what's coming. 64% of you are going with the 49ers in an upset. Ooh, this is going to oh, be boy. such a good game. I'm still nervous. You know, we have really good Really good players that we're about to go against, so it'll be a challenge. Nah, I'd be lying if I said, you know, I, I, I'd never been nervous before games. That's just, like, part of, you know, the the feeling of playing football, man. Like, man, like, we're about to go and, and play this sport, and it's a violent sport, and you got to be a warrior in what you do. So there's definitely, you know, that, that pregame feeling. But as the game goes, man, it's, it's like, it's fun. You know, you, you enjoy it. Got a three-point stance. Fellas, Steve, I would love for you to give me three hmm. points yes. that would seal up a victory for the 49ers over the Eagles. Well, let me pat myself on the back a little bit. I want <laughs> to hit you, hit you with my elbow as I do it. But I actually starting to like this uh, three-point yeah. stance a little bit. So let me get right yes. into it. Well, the three-point stance, first of all, you're going to have to give a lot of variations to Jalen Hurts. You got to understand, when you go to Costco and you get that variety pack of chips, oh, you got to yeah. do that same thing with the secondary. You just can't eat the Funyuns. <laughs> I like the Funyuns. Ooh, They're so good. Like you like Funyuns. <laughs> Look, Funyuns in a Mountain Dew. Ooh, because of that, you got to put in second. You know that's this guy named Michael Vick? Well, Jalen Hurts has this capability as Michael Vick, too. So you have to have a spy on Jalen Hurts because He's just as dangerous in the pocket, but he's even more dangerous with his legs as well. And then finally, the third is you got to make the Eagles drive the length of the field. Listen to this, Bucky. Did you know? Did you know that the 49ers, their offense, the opposing offense, the longest time of possession, two minutes and 37 seconds. Oh, yeah. However, the Eagles in their 11 drives that, that have lasted longer than seven minutes, is equal into eight touchdowns. So you know what you got? You have two heavyweight fighters. Mm -hmm. One's never went past the third round, and the other one, they've never gone past the eighth or ninth round. So something's going to break, and something's going to do something that they never done before. Right. Yeah, and we get the opportunity. You see it? When? Three o'clock. We get to figure out. <laughs> Which heavyweight fight goes down? Is it in the fourth round, fifth round, or eighth right. round? Or does it go 12 full rounds? It's going the I'm distance. Excited. It's going the distance for sure. Ooh. We heard Brock Purdy just a minute ago talk about the nerves before a game. That's mm -hmm. normal. 
something that would probably calm his nerves, knowing the fact that Kyle Shanahan is the one to calm the place. One of the most creative playmakers we've seen in the National Football League. How much do you trust that, though, Bucky? Do you think that gives the Niners an upper hand here? Oh, absolutely, because he's one of the best play callers in football. And what you're going to see is Kyle Shanahan loves to do it, deception and misdirection. And when you think about what they want to show, I mean, the X and O is going to break it down for him. It makes it very, very simple for him. You know, we look at it here. So we talk about deception and misdirection. So here we go, Debo Samuel, who was a punt returner at South Carolina. You put the ball in his hands, and so now you have a running back. You got, look, a little convoy out there. Little convoy, get up the field, get going. I've seen my man 89 do that on occasion during his time at Carolina. You take it, you put it in the paint. So we got the reverse. So the other way, you do deception and misdirection. Bootleg. So we got run play going to the left, roll it back out to the right. We have a crosser, and then we got the big boy post. So safety jumps across. My man is turning around, spinning tops. Big play. Bootleg action. Kyle Shanahan's going to dial this up a few different ways. And then it's about misdirection. Bubble screens. Moving people around. Oh, that's Christian McCaffrey up at the top. Get it to him quick. This is an extension of their running game. The San Francisco 49ers have a collection of hybrid playmakers, a bunch of chameleons that can do a bunch of different things. And then Kyle Shanahan just moves and plays the shell game mm -hmm. to create opportunities, big play opportunities for his playmakers. Now, the 49ers have reached the conference championship late. Um, but one person who is not at all concerned about dealing with the Philly fans, Debo Samuel. We know it's going to be loud, uh, you know, um, but no stadium is as loud as ours. But at the end of the day, you know, they're at home, NFC Championship, they're going to be all riled up. And, you know, it don't, it don't really too much. We don't really too, too much feed into all that. You know, we put the pads on and just go to work. Good mentality there. Our Championship Sunday host sites have some interesting facts attached to them. When you talk about atmosphere, Arrowhead Stadium is the third oldest home stadium in the NFL. Reached the Guinness World Record of 142.2 decimals Ooh. back in 2014 against the Raiders. As for the link, 8-1 home record at the link this season, including playoffs. It also has a four-hour fan code of condo course that it requires fans who have been evicted from the stadium to complete before re-entry. You guys know all about playing under hostile <laughs> environments. <laughs> what? What did you do? What did you say? I, what is happening? Call it again. MJ, what was that? I can't hear. Call it back in. Okay, well, I'm sorry. I don't know. Uh, Steve, you know what? You played in and won an NFC championship in Philadelphia is the crowd is raucous, 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 raucous is advertised. They are. Uh, it, you know, Philly fans will also turn on themselves. Too. <laughs> they will turn on their team. They will boo you as the opposing team. But if the opposing team uh, starts to show that games are looking different and it's not the outcome that they're expecting, they will start to tone, turn on their team. And that's the one thing that I would say that, that really changes Arrowhead. Arrowhead is more, uh, what would you say, optimistic, Oscar? Friendly. Yeah, more right. friendly. Yeah. They're more concerned about their team and less about the, you know, I, I don't want to say the result, but less about the result because they have faith. Yeah. You know, I, I think Bucky said it better in our in our production in meeting. Well, I, I mean, like in, in Philly, you got to understand, there's a lot of negativity sometimes yeah. in surrounds. You know, they sometimes. always feel like sometimes. they always feel like they've been slighted to underdog they mentality. Have. And sometimes that anxiety, you can feel that in the stadium. And that is on the sideline. The, si the team feels that. They feel all that angst and, oh, my God, here we go again. We're not good enough. We're not going to win. And so it's not only a lot of pressure on the opposing team, it's a lot of pressure on the home team when you play it at Philly. It's so a tough both, environment. So you're saying, like, both stadiums are loud, but does that mean that it's easier to play in Philadelphia? I wouldn't say it's easier. It basically put it like this. Look, when you're playing against Philadelphia – and playing against the Eagles and how their fan base is, it's like when you look, you forget your coupon book, you're heading to the grocery store, and you you only got a few dollars, and you don't have that coupon book, you start to look and realize, so I'm gonna have to take about several items <laughs> off this belt. The only way I can take all these groceries home, that's what they get. They get anxiety. They just get unsettled. And Philly is just a natural place. They have high expectations for their team. Yeah. But they turn so quickly. 
as well. So that's the part that that really takes away from the the, 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 the home field advantage for the Philadelphia Eagles. Right. The tension, the tension is different in yes, Philadelphia right. and Kansas City. I mean, Kansas City, they're looking to have a party, and because they riled up, they poked the bear a little bit. They called it Burrowhead. So you know. Right. All the red is going to be out. They're going to be loud. And it's a place where it can be a decided advantage for the Kansas City Chiefs because, look, we saw them. Guinness Book of World Records, they set the decibel, the noise level. So it's yeah. going to be loud, it's going to be festive, but they're going to be for Kansas City, not so much the anxiety that Philadelphia Eagles hey, have. That's a beach party. There's one thing I didn't uh, factor in and just thinking about it. You know, San Francisco, Yeah. they travel well. Now. They do. And it's going to be interesting. You know, San Francisco folks, you know, Cali folks, we're a little bit different. Yeah. And Philly think they tough, too. So, <laughs> yeah, well, that's one listen, it might, be a, it, it might be a few uh, fisticuffs, we'll some, uh, so, some fist fights in the phone booth out there, depending on who wins. It's a little bit different than filling SoFi Stadium, but to go into a place like Philadelphia where the crowd can turn. No, because in SoFi and Philly, I'll say it like this. You can get shanked anywhere, and San Francisco fans have every yeah. intention of protecting themselves. <laughs> okay, fair enough. I, I have no follow for that. Anyways, MJ, why don't you take it away? Well, the team itself, the Eagles, got another practice in today. Nick Sirianni said there was zero restrictions for Jalen Hurts, who injured his shoulder late in the regular season. Sirianni added he's kind of ripping it just like every week. Mike Garofalo is in Philly with more. The Eagles on Friday held their last practice of the week in advance of Sunday's NFC Championship game against the 49ers, and head coach Nick Sirianni was asked what he looks for in a team to know that they're in the right mindset and focused during the week leading up to a game. He said you look at walkthrough, you look at practice, and you look at meetings, and you see if the focus and energy is there. And check, check, check. He said, yeah, he's seen all of that this week. So he's comfortable with his players' mindset heading into this one. Uh, and certainly during practice, it seems like the focus has been there. Cornerback Darius Slay was saying one of the things that they've been working on this week is all that motion and window dressing that they're going to see before the play even starts from San Francisco's offense. Slay saying that 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 needs to be a focus for the defensive backs and their communication to make sure everyone is on the same page. And it has been that way during practice this week. They're going to have to communicate through that noise of the home crowd, by the way. That's been a big topic this week. And certainly both sides of it are expecting a hostile crowd. And I use that word hostile because that's what Sirianni used when asked by a German reporter about Santa Claus and the snowballs years ago. He said that was years ago. But yeah, our fans are going to be hostile. And he expects that again on Sunday. Yeah, listen, Mike G knows firsthand that that crowd is no joke. But when you think of the game specifically, so let's leave the crowd where they are, focus on the field for a moment. Jalen Hurts is the first player in the Super Bowl era to rank top five in both passer rating and rushing touchdowns in a single season. How has he been able to just carve up what defensive coordinators have really thrown his way, Steve? Well, listen, when you're looking at Jalen Hurts and you think – and believe that you can throw anything at him and he's going to take the cheese. Let me tell you something. He's not taking the cheese. He's going to look at what he has. But the question is, are your guys going to keep their eyes on their luggage? Look, you got a safety coming down right here. You got a corner, so you got a go route. I don't know what these three guys are looking at, but hey, there's someone wide open, reversing, going on the other side. This is against the Minnesota Vikings. The Minnesota Vikings are running a ton of zone coverage, and Jalen Hurts was back there picking them apart. I believe at 1.10 consecutive completions. And then you got right here the, uh, against the Giants. Again, zone coverage. The Slim Reaper, great pass. No, uh, not getting Jalen Hurts off his spot. You got to understand with Jalen Hurts, he is a quarterback who he's rhythm, time, escapability, but at the same time, he also knows exactly what he's doing. He can run the ball and pass the ball from the shoulders down, but what he's really developed since college, now in the pros, He's developed from the shoulders up, and that's what makes him so dangerous. He is a very dangerous playmaker. The 49ers run zone more than anybody else. Let's see if they change that up, though, because you need to play man coverage to stop a, a mobile quarterback like that. I would expect the unexpected this weekend, but you can always expect here on Total Access on Fridays, game picks. Let's get to it. I have lost sleep over this one, so Rank, I'm starting with you. Who you got? Yeah, this is a difficult. This whole, both these games have been very difficult to pick, but I'm going to take the Eagles in a close contest, 21 to 20. 
I think what it comes down to is the quarterback play. I'm not saying that Brock Purdy is going to be exposed or anything like that. I expect him to play well. But I think this Eagles team has been somehow still overlooked because they were so good for such a long time. Had a couple of missteps when Gardner Minshew was in there. But now that Gar now that Jalen's back and ready to go, I just don't think it'll be stopped. Okay. I'm not looking at Brock Purdy to make any mistakes. So what I'm really looking at is the Philadelphia Eagles. Their times, their secondary, and for every 10 great plays, they have about two or three plays that are mistakes. And I believe those mistakes will cost them. So I have the 49ers 21, 24-21 uh, upset. And I need brighter lights. More. <laughs> More. More. More light. I'm with uh, you. Uh, Steve, Steve is on point. Uh, it's something about the Niners that I just feel like they have the upper hand in this matchup. And it's going to take Nick Bosa having a monster day, but Kyle Shanahan has to be in his bag for this to uh, come to fruition. So let's go with the Niners 24 to 20. Yeah. Um, wow, by one point, you guys. Come on. Are. Yeah. Come on, MJ. I told you I've lost sleep over this. It's. it's come on. Come on. Such a tough matchup. Come on. Such a close matchup. So you know what I did? I phoned a friend. Oh. Kim Bob Butter Super Bowl. Yes, dad, in real time. I can't pick. I don't know. Yo creo que los Bengals de parte de la AFC, pero no sé for NFC. So give me the two teams. Bengals and? And Eagles. <gasps> it's my dad's pick. Okay, thanks, dad. My dad now in retirement. He has plenty of time to help out his firstborn, <laughs> dare I say, favorite child. Am I taking the easy way out? Maybe. A little bit. But my dad and I, we talk ball all the time, constantly. So I said, let me just pick up the phone and call this man. Let him pick. So Bobby's pick, Eagles. I'm going to pick up where he left off. I'll give you the score, 24 to 21. We also asked you guys at home. Ooh. OK, Niner gang, Whoa. I see y'all. 64% of folks. take a picture and send it to Pop. Anybody, yeah.